This project has taken me three weeks and numerous nap times, quiet times to complete, but we are finally finished with the storage room. But before I show you how it looks now, we have to go back to the beginning and see where we started. Throughout the process of decluttering and simplifying this room, I, like I mentioned a couple weeks ago, I really had like a moving mentality and we're not moving anytime soon, but I just kept thinking to myself, if we were to move, would I wanna bring this with me? And if the answer was no, it made it so much simpler to go ahead and pass those things along to somebody that could use them or simply get rid of them or donate them. After we had the room completely emptied and we were ready to bring things back in, we started with the things that we absolutely knew we wanted to keep. We brought in those first priority items first and then what was left behind, it made it much easier to make those final calls on, do we even really need to keep this? Can we pass this along to somebody? So we had taken out even more by the time we were done putting this room back together. So now the room is so much more simplified and I won't hold you off any longer. Let's go inside. The biggest change by far in this room is how much open free space we have. Before it was so cluttered, there was no rhyme or reason for where anything was put and it was very hard to access and I honestly did not like coming into this room. But now it is open and clear, everything has a place and a purpose. So I'm going to walk you around and show you what we did in this room. So I did already share this last week, but we painted the concrete floors. I'll show you what they looked like before. They were just unfinished, very kind of scraggly and, you know, kind of dusty and just really needed to be sealed. So we painted them with a bare porch and floor paint, gave it two good coats, cleaned it really well, painted it twice, and then we also painted the walls a nice bright white because before it was just kind of like a dirty tan color and it just made this whole space feel much darker. So the nice bright white paint really helped to brighten this whole space up because we don't actually have any windows in here. So everything is nice and fresh. So let's start on this wall here. We added this shelf that actually came with our house in our upstairs kitchen pantry and we never really had a use for it, but we found the perfect spot for it here to hold all of these smaller cans of paint. And this is really like the perfect size. I don't know if when they, I think somebody built this, it's like the perfect size for this, you know, like a 28 ounce can of food type thing. Um, it fits perfectly there. And then we also have some trash bags and contractor bags and then just smaller items and then spray paint at the top. And then we did just install a little screw here to hang some scissors, which is really handy. We tucked our painting stick on the side and a fire extinguisher. And then we did move our deep freezer here. If you remember, it used to be all the way in the back corner, but now it's going to be so much easier to use to come in and out of the door to you know, put things in and to take things out. And then next to that, we have this small shelf for some seasonal decor. So I have just like faux flowers at the top and then fall books in that container, more fall and Halloween at the bottom, and then we have spring here. And I really worked hard to declutter these items so that they would only fit in one container. And then we have Christmas on the other side. And then on this back wall, we moved these two larger shelves. They used to be on this wall, but I thought this was a better place for them. And we already had these shelving units, but then we added the black ones to it. These are Husky brand. They're incredibly high quality just from Home Depot. And now we're able to really categorize things. So this is primarily like painting supplies and paint, and then some things that we, you know, kind of separated. I didn't label them because 
we may not keep everything in that exact spot always, but they do have a little space here in the front where we could add a label. And then likewise on this side, we just have like bigger, bulkier tools at the bottom. And then we tried to separate things out kind of by category of where we would use them and then so on up all the way and then random things at the top. So those sit on either side of our well. And then over here we have our oil tank. And then back in this section, we kind of created a wall with these two shelving units so that we could kind of sneak some things back here and create a little room, if you will. Because it's such a large space, we didn't want to only line the perimeter. We wanted to kind of take advantage of this floor space. So that's what we did. So we have all of Christmas items are here and then this rack is mostly kids clothes that they're kind of growing into and some shoes at the top and what i liked was putting the clothing on this rolling rack because when it is christmas time and we need to access some things in the back we can roll this one out of the way and really access this back area so like i said we created a little walkway here so now off to the right we have our memorabilia bins and if you remember they used to be in bankers boxes like cardboard boxes and i really wanted to upgrade to plastic just to keep them more protected so i actually found these at staples they're just file folders like file bins and they are almost the exact dimensions of my bankers boxes so everything from each box it was just an even swap to transfer them into these bins so we have six of them here and then at the very top we just have some wreaths for various different seasons that aren't christmas and then at the very top on the ceiling we actually hang our trick-or-treat baskets because there's a million nails in these ceilings probably for different storage that the previous owners used but it was a perfect spot because these are kind of bulky to put into a bin so this gets them up and out of the way and then off back here we have just like some kids travel items so their suitcase and then a pack and play and this is a mattress topper that goes with the pack and play it makes it a little bit more comfortable and then these stacks it's just a couple different types of things so this is all home decor picture frames just when i feel like i want to kind of switch up our decor i can kind of come down and shop what i already have and then we have some party wear just some leftover things and then these two bins are like pre-k at home and kind of like schooling at home type things that i use with my preschooler and maybe we'll save for her brother too and then the back we have a headboard that we would like to use in the future and then like i said because these racks kind of make this little nook back here it was the perfect place to stack up our very large Christmas tree bags. These two bags create one Christmas tree and then we have a second tree in that green bag. And then this box is for our Christmas wreath that is still up on the house. But when we're done with it, we'll fold it up and put it in there. But I just kind of really like this little nook back here. It doesn't you know, you don't just see it right away when you walk in the room. We kind of created a little wall here of items that we would probably use more frequently. And the less often used items are kind of tucked away in the back. And in addition to the trick-or-treating bins, we did take advantage of some of the ceiling up here to store some long items like some copper piping, some cedar planking that go in two of the closets of the house, and some PVC pipes, just really trying to take advantage of it. We didn't want to close off these ceilings. We wanted to be able to access any of the wires and things because when we finished the finished side of our basement, we did run all of the wires in through here and rewired everything so that any access points would be on this side. And like I showed in a previous video, we added this paneling to the walls to cover up the exposed insulation since we had finished the opposite side of the basement we just wanted to cover that up and the paneling worked really well for that but that is it that is the whole room i mean i'm just so happy with this room to have this weight off of my shoulders it has been a project i've wanted to tackle ever since we started working on this basement and it's not 100 percent done but if you want to go back and see some of those videos i will link some of them for you be sure to give this video a thumbs up if there is a space in your home that you really need to tackle i actually did an organizing job this weekend i do professional organizing part-time when they're available and they fit with our schedule and I was helping out a client and honestly she and you and so many people really can do 
the hard work yourself. You know, you can make the decisions, you can declutter those really messy spaces. It's just about setting aside the time. So she was saying to me like, you know, if, if I did this by myself, it would take me so long and I would get distracted. Having you here, you know, holds me accountable. And I thought, yes, that's exactly what it is. So if you have a big space in your home you need to tackle, I would highly encourage you to truly set aside the time and schedule it into your week, your month, whenever you can fit it in. And if you feel comfortable having someone there to help you to make decisions, to hold you accountable, to ask you those hard questions maybe you don't want to answer for yourself. And it's such a blessing to me to see others so happy with their space by the time we're done and just feel that weight lifted off of them and I'm able to take away their donations and just leave them with a clean slate. And I know how good that feels for myself and I love being able to help others do that. I had to set aside nap times to come down here and put in the hard work and make the decisions. It did take me like three weeks to do it, but now that it's done, it's really just a maintenance situation. I don't have to do that big purge and that big declutter again, and I can just enjoy this space and come and go through this room and not feel frustrated every single time. So glad that I finished it. And this video is the final episode in this month long series that we've been doing called a clutter free January hosted by Dawn from the Minimal Mom. I will link her down below and I will also link the playlist for all of the other content creators that are sharing their storage spaces and others are also going to be talking about sentimental clutter because I know that can be a big issue for a lot of people. As you can see, this is the majority of our sentimental items. And then we also do have individual bins for each of our three children for kind of like their baby and newborn items that are in their bedrooms. But everything else is here. So definitely check out all of the other participants. Videos will be added throughout this day and also throughout this week. So be sure to go and check them out and get inspired to tackle your storage spaces. So if you are new to my channel, coming over from Dawn's channel or someone else's, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Be sure to stick around and subscribe. I'd love to share all about the projects we have going on in our home and this month it's been really fun to be decluttering and organizing and as we're heading into the springtime there will be more projects for sure and just sharing life with you. So I'd love for you to stick around and I'll be talking to you guys very soon. Take care. Bye.